Okay, this day is finally here, you guys. It is the one year wear and tear update on the Louis Vuitton Cousin bag. Welcome back to my channel. Rachel went shopping. Hopefully you are a returning viewer and you have watched my other two videos on the Kusan bag. And if you are and you haven't subscribed yet, then please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. If you have not watched those videos yet, I highly suggest checking out my Louis Vuitton Kusan bag unboxing. I will link it down below in the description box, as well as my three month wear and tear update. Today, we are going to be doing the one year update date. This was a highly requested video in my most recent My Favorite Mom Bags video. I let you guys know that I was going to put up a community post on my page and to ask me any questions you had about the Kusan bag and that I would get them answered in this video. Let's get into it because we have a lot to cover today. Hey guys, okay, this is Editing Rachel here. I was halfway through editing this video and I realized that I have way too much footage for one video. So I'm going to break this up into two or three parts. This first part here is going to be all about the wear and tear, a review of the pros and cons, a lot of which I mentioned in my three month update, but sort of how those have continued or not. And as I was editing, like I said, I got about halfway through, I noticed when I was doing a lot of the like comparison shots, I noticed a lot more detailed things that I wanted to point out. So I'm going to shoot a little bit more detailed comment on that wear that will be at the end of this video. Make sure you check out this video and then stay tuned for part two, potentially part three. We'll see how long they are. I am still recovering from a cold, so I apologize for my voice, especially if you hear it like cracking. I've kind of been losing it lately, so bear with me. Let's start with an explanation of what one year of true wear looks like for me. Because wear can look different for everyone depending on where you live, where you're at in life, and how you use your bag. I am the mother of a toddler who will be turning four in two months, and I have been working from home since March of 2020. I would say that I have 12 months of consistent use with this bag. I use it as a daily bag. However, consistent use for me might be very different from consistent use for you. For example, when I used to live in New York, I used to wear my bags very hard. Since moving, I find that it's a lot easier for me to take care of my bags because I'm not walking everywhere and commuting everywhere. I'm just going to and from my car and to and from where I'm going. I would say I leave the house about four to five days a week. I take turns with my husband picking up and dropping off my son from school maybe take my son to the park I run to Starbucks I do all of the family errands like grocery shopping going to Costco going to Target I occasionally go to the mall and do some shopping and obviously I visit friends and family when I can I have a few appointments here and there and then I occasionally go out for a lunch or a dinner but I wouldn't say that I do it that often that's pretty much it when I wear this bag the majority of of the time I am wearing it with this crossbody strap right here without the chain attached. So I'm just wearing the pouch with this strap crossbody. I have worn it several times with just this chain as a more evening bag or a more dressed up look. I haven't worn it without this as just a pouch or a clutch, even though that work, that look would totally work. I am more of a glam flashy girl. So I feel like I would always wear it with the chain. I have used the chain a few other times on other bags and I have worn it a handful of times as a necklace. So that is a little bit about what 12 months of use would look like for me. My pros and cons for this bag have not really changed since my three month wear and tear update. So please go check out that video. I will do a quick recap and maybe repeat a few things, but I don't wanna spend this whole video telling you things that I already told you in the three month update. And then of course I will show detailed up close footage of this bag. So you can see exactly what the wear and tear updates and I will do my best to compare it to previous footage so you can see what it looks like over time. Chapters will be in the description box if you are looking for specific footage. Go ahead and scroll down there. You don't have to listen to everything. I'm going to start by walking you through a quick recap of the pros and cons of the bag. And lastly, I'm gonna do close-up video footage of all of the different components of the bag so you can see the wear and tear in more detail like I did in my previous video. I do have notes, so if you see me look off to the side, let's 
start with the pros and cons. So I'm going to go piece by piece. First up, the cotton strap. I'm going to show you a more detailed shot, but I have definitely started noticing some pilling and I don't know if it's going to show up well. There is a teeny bit of pilling as well as just like little bits of fuzziness that you see throughout because of this being like this cotton-esque textile it attracts a lot of dust you know dog hair you can always hit this with a uh, um oh my god why can't I think of the word but it is annoying that that's something that you even had to have to do with the nylon straps like the one that comes with the multi pochette it's uh, in my opinion a lot easier to just clean this off Whereas here I'm seeing a lot more wear. It just makes it look really casual and like a gym bag, which I don't love for such an expensive bag. Here, like for example, I don't know if you can see that, a lot more pilling there. So that is definitely a con is the pilling, the fuzzies, the fact that I just think this is too casual and I've discussed that previously. The pros of this strap, are that it's very comfortable to wear, it's lightweight, and it's removable. So if you don't like it, then you can just replace it. I have been looking at strap alternatives that I think would look good with this bag. I have two. There is this one. The style number is J02287. It retails for 570. However, it is not adjustable. You might be able to wear a crossbody if you're shorter. I would not be able to, so it's more of a shoulder strap. I am more interested in this adjustable one which is J02465. It retails for 730. You could wear it as a shoulder or a crossbody. The only thing that I'm not sure I love about it is those brass snaps that are the way that it adjusts. I'm not sure if I love those. I really need to see it in person and try it on with the bag, but I do think that it would be cool to add a monogram strap to this for that casual look. Even though this has the Louis Vuitton printing in it, it's still pretty understated. So I do feel like the monogram strap could add a little more fun and Louis Vuitton to this bag if you like logos and you like the monogram. There are tons of other straps that you could pair this with this bag. That is the one that I'm considering the most is that $730 one. So it's a con because I think this is a waste. I think this could have done been done a lot better. It's not a 100% turn off for me because I can mix and match it. It's comfortable, it's casual, and I could wear this bag with another strap. I wish they would change this though. Next up, the chain. Let's talk about the cons. This is gold plated, or not real gold, but gold tone plated. So you are gonna see wear at the friction points. And again, I'm going to show you this all up close. I find that Louis Vuitton plating is not always in perfect condition. There's always a little bit of hairline scratches, sometimes some bubbling, you know, not perfect edges. This is not going to be immaculate forever. It's showing a little bit of wear, but honestly, it's only on like up close inspection, which nobody is going to be inspecting your bag strap or your necklace. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think it's very functional. I love this chain because it's chunky. It features the extra branding. I think is just an amazing detail. And I would wear this with a ton of bags, both as a strap and as something that just hangs off and adds something to the bag. So I love this strap. I think a con to it could be, it's not necessarily comfortable on the shoulder because it is big. It's quite heavy. Oh, I am gonna weigh everything and tell you the weights in this video as well. So stay tuned for that. The other con of this was that the chain doesn't necessarily properly hang off the bag when you're wearing it, which I talked about in depth in my three month update, but I do have an update on that for you, thanks to a commenter. I think a pro to this is just the versatility, wearing it with other bags, either as a strap or hanging off. The fact that you can wear this as a necklace, the many ways that I showed you in my previous video, I have worn this as a necklace a handful of ways, I love that I get that added versatility with this bag. Be careful if you are wearing this on your skin and you are sweating, you can get that metal smell. It will also probably tarnish faster. I like to wear it over like a material so it's not necessarily touching my skin because I have sensitive skin. But yeah, I just love this chain. This was honestly the number one selling point of the bag for me. So I can't say that much negative about it. I see a little bit of scratching here and there Nothing crazy though. I don't think this is showing too much wear, but definitely at the friction points, 
To me, it's almost the same as at the three month update though. I do wanna give you an update though on the strap and having it hang properly when you're wearing it crossbody. So in the three month update video, Beth commented, I must say I found a trick so that the chain isn't caught between the corner of the bag when attached. I attach the chain to the D-rings on the canvas strap, the D-rings right at the top of the actual lobster clips and it doesn't even reach the bottom of the bag anymore. And someone else commented underneath and said they tried it and it worked. So I also tried it and I'm gonna show you guys in this video what she means because if you own this bag and that is bothering you about it then this can be a game changer for you so if you clip the strap on like this she is talking about these d-rings right here above the lobster clip so let me put them on and let's see what it looks like if i can i will get it up and show you this on but there you go beth is a lifesaver and this is a game changer. If that was driving you nuts about this bag, then here you go. Look, it, it can't even get caught unless you drop it really low. So I definitely suggest putting the bag on and then laying the chain properly. You no longer have that chain if you, issue if you are hanging it up there. So everybody go give Beth her flowers in the comments section because that was such an insanely helpful tip and I hope if that was driving you nuts that that helps you out as well. Okay now let's talk about the pouch itself. So the cons still that the middle zip is annoying to zip however I never zip it. I actually think it's pretty pointless that they even put the middle zip in there because I never use it. I actually don't really zip this closed a lot because it's so close to my body. I think I would notice if somebody was trying to stick their hand in there, but I do think that that middle zip is pretty pointless and I showed you before how it gets caught a little, like it's all wavy and weird. I don't like that about the bag. And then the tab, you guys know how annoying the tab is. That's not gonna change. We know that this tab is supposed to tuck perfectly in there like that. That's how they wear it on the runway. It is what it is. It's weird. It's annoying, but it's there. I don't like the tab. I think on the pros side, the lambskin has held up very well. I think that this smooth lambskin is way more durable than Chanel lambskin. When I go check out the Chanel lambskin bags at the store and I feel them, they feel so lightweight and delicate and thin. I'm honestly not, they're soft, but I'm not impressed by them. This feels so thick and durable. I, there is no scratching on it, but we will talk a little bit about the crinkling effect. But this lambskin is way more durable than Chanel. I think that you can use and abuse this. I am seeing very little corner wear, like no scratching. Honestly, the leather itself has held up very well. What I do notice, which I will try to capture on camera, is I do think the imprint has slightly is maybe slightly not as puffy as it was in the beginning again i will do side by side shots and I, I do notice a little bit more crinkling or wrinkling throughout i do feel like as well the leather looks i'm trying to show you at different angles so you can see it the leather looks a little duller if that makes sense and not as shiny and i can see little wrinkles and crinkles throughout, but it doesn't look messy like the goat skin Chanel 19 bags that I showed you in my previous video. This is a lot thicker and more substantial, but I am noticing a little bit of wear there. I don't know if maybe there is a conditioner that I can put on this to make it a little more shiny again, but personally I don't mind the um, duller, it still has a little bit of shine to it. I just think when it was brand new, it was shinier. So there's that. And again, I will show you more detailed footage at the end, as well as some side-by-side -side shots. When talking about the pouch, one other thing that I forgot to mention was the fact that aesthetically, I like the three pouch look 
that you get with the Kusan. And I think like it helps you keep it organized by having the three separate sections. I do think though that having it one, as one big section would have allowed it to fit more. For example, a water bottle would look very awkward in here, but if it was one wide open space, it would be a lot easier to fit a water bottle size inside of this. So that is one other con to this, is I feel like the three sections are unnecessary. I mean, I guess if you like to keep all your stuff organized, great, but I kind of would just like one big open space. But aesthetically, I like the look of the three sections from the outside of the bag, so can never be perfect. Overall on the pro side, the other thing is that this is a great bag for plus size or big chest. I love wearing this crossbody. It hangs perfectly on me. I'm a size 16, 18 top and I do have a bigger chest and I think this is a great option if you're looking, if you're plus size and you're looking for a luxury bag. So that is a major pro to keep in mind as well as just the versatility in general. We're going to talk about that more when we get into the questions and answers. Okay, like I said, when I was editing the footage and comparing it to the three month update footage, I wanted to talk more in depth about each of the pieces individually to make sure I really gave you all the details. So let's talk about the chain. This piece is probably the least used of the three because I use the pouch with the crossbody strap more. So these like lobster clips here, there is maybe a couple hairline scratches here and there but not really much. And even on like the interiors there, I don't see a lot of wear. There are like a few scratches and dings that you can see throughout. Like up there, I see a couple dings. Not sure if they're gonna show on camera. I honestly don't know if they're new or if they were there in the beginning. Again, I will try to put in side by side, but the most noticeable wear on the chain is at these intersection points here. And in order, you can't see it. If you're looking at this chain right now, you can't see anywhere, right? The only way you can see it is if I move these in and then you actually look at the inside of the links. I'll try to insert some pictures. It's honestly hard to show you on video. So I'll try to get some better shots of it. But if this is hanging on your shoulder, you would never see those points. It's only when it's like laying flat and the chain is moving around that you can even see it. Oh, here, this one's a good example. There, can you see that? A little bit of wear up at the top there. So I think that it's a little unreasonable to expect. Well, I don't know, it's an expensive bag. But my point being that you can't see that unless you push the link in and inspect it closely. To me, it's not a big deal. I think this thing has remained in good shape. All of the visible pieces are not showing any major wear. Let's see. Yeah, maybe there's like a little bit of dullness or scratching there. So that's the chain.
Okay, now let's take a closer look at this strap, which again, I already told you, but dust and dog hair, I even tried to get a lot of it off. It just attracts it. But I wanna look at the hardware a little closer. So this strap I use a lot more than the chain strap and you can see a lot more wear on these pieces in my opinion. And I'm not sure if this will show up on camera. I will try to put some more detail shots in. Here's one side, here's the other side. There's just a little more hairline scratching, but I would say the most wear is on the in the upper inside here where the chains obviously, where it connects to the bag and obviously it's going like this constantly. So if I can show you a good, I'll try to take a picture. Hopefully I can show you kind of what that wear looks like there. I'll do my best. These leather pieces last time there was like some glue marks on it that I actually got off. So nothing noteworthy about that leather there. This hardware on this part of the strap, I don't notice a lot of wear or discoloration. No issues with the leather or the stitching here. The biggest thing is obviously how much it attracts dust and stuff. And then like, I don't know if you can see this and I'll try to put in better, better pictures. The fuzziness really picks up along the edge there. And that's where I notice, you know, there's some slight pilling and I will try to show you in different lights, but you really notice the fuzziness along the edge of the strap. But again, the most wear is at the point where it connects to the pieces on the bag for this strap. Okay, let's talk about the pouch now because this is where I started noticing a lot more wear when I was actually reviewing the comparison to the three month footage. So let me just start by the hardware. The zipper itself actually looks fine. I don't even see that much scra uh, scratching on it when I wiped it down. The weird part is though, this part of the zipper, I notice a lot of darkening and almost like a weird flat overtone that I'm noticing on that zipper hardware. But I would say that is the most worn of all of the hardware pieces. These parts, I actually don't notice much wear at all. I still have my plastic on. I know you guys probably think I'm a freak. I'm one of those people. I actually see no wear on the inside of this part, which is interesting because obviously I told you guys I wear the crossbody strap with this all the time, but I don't see any wear inside of that. This piece, there's a lot of friction here constantly and you can see the wrinkling and the use there but what really stood out to me when looking at the footage was how much shinier this bag was in the three month update i noticed a lot more creasing i don't even know just like a lot more texture a lot more pores and like i mentioned before like a duller finish when i was looking at the three month update video this looked really shiny and it's almost like I didn't see as much of the pores in the leather. I'm using a new camera too, but 
still, I definitely notice a difference and I think you'll notice the difference too when I show you the different footage here. Like there's some creasing you can see there. It's kind of all over aside from also potentially loss of depth, but honestly you can still see there's no way to measure it. What I will say though is that you and I are noticing it because we're looking at the direct comparison. We know what this bag looked like in the beginning. If I was wearing this bag out on the street from far away, I mean, even from a foot away, like looking at it here, it just looks like another leather bag. Nobody is gonna be like, oh my gosh, her, look at her bag. It lost its luster. It looks so used and abused. Like it does not look use and abuse. It just looks like another leather bag and it looks a lot less shiny. But I hope you guys understand what I'm saying and I hope you guys can see it. And if that bothers you, then this bag is probably not going to be for you. But what I will say is I think this shows more on a dark, especially black bag. I think it would probably be less of a concern on a lighter color bag. I know um, videos I've seen of the white and cream version. I don't think this would stand out as much because it is dark. I think it would show more flaws. On the bottom, honestly, I didn't notice any, any additional creasing really from the first time I showed this bag. And like I said, there's basically no corner wear and I'll put in a lot of footage and pictures of that. I store this bag upright with usually the strap folded up back on my shelf in there. I don't usually stuff it with anything. I could, no real wear or wrinkling down the sides. It's really just the texture of the leather itself. And I am going to look into potentially a conditioner, see if I can shine this baby up again. And if I do, I will definitely share that with you when I do it. you guys so much for checking out part one of this video. If you want to see more about what I think of the price increase on this bag, the new $4,700 price, as well as all of the q and I have 28 questions that you guys asked across my community post and the first two videos I made on this bag, then make sure you stay tuned for the next part. If you enjoyed this video and found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.